we've got a new generation of people growing up more familiar with the technology and AI and, and the large language models, as everyone's discovering, are incredibly good at um, simulating human uh, thought and human actions. There might be a premium for having real human interaction and maybe, I don't know, uh, as the technology gets diff more indistinguishable from real humans, that might present a real problem to our natural tendency to try and uh, identify with who we're speaking with. I think that's exactly right. And I just did an episode with our friend Alison Gopnik about, you know, her, oh, yeah. her, her view with some of her colleagues is that we should be looking at these large language models as a cultural technology, essentially like a library, a way mm. of collecting lots of information and disseminating it in different ways. But it's precisely because we're so prone to anthropomorphizing that uh, we can't help but uh, assume it is an intelligent agent and treat it like a human. Well, the interesting thing is, you probably remember the the, the first uh, chat bot was Eliza, which was built back in 1967, which was a was a it was basically a, a little project to try and simulate Rogerian therapy, where you just repeat the question back. And what they found was, even though the the people working on it knew it was actually a piece of software, they nevertheless enjoyed interacting with it because it actually felt therapeutic. Mm -hmm. 